<clears throat> Hello, my name is Starla Henderson with Runner House Quilts, and um, we are finishing up our um, spring sampler. Uh, we we're in the embroidery phase now, and last time we did the eye on our on our rabbit, on our bunny. And the last thing that I did, and one of the most time in, in consuming thing that I did, was all of this work in these ferns. I'm going to try and hold it up where you can really see it. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I love the, what they add to this quilt. And I've gotten addicted to doing this kind of work on my, especially floral, anything that I've got floral, because it just fills in just like um, in a flower arrangement, all of the little greenery that you that's stuck in in between our flowers when we buy flower arrangements. This does that for your quilt. And it does take time, but it's very, very worth it. One thing I haven't talked about, as lately anyway, is on the back of the quilt with this back basting method, is I put, I used um, interfacing. That interfacing provides stability, and I don't need to use a hoop to keep my quilt the way I want it, stable and, and taut enough for my embroidery. And I like that because I really don't like to put an embroidery hoop on something that I've appliqued because I'm afraid it's going to stretch it. So I'm just extra careful. And then with that behind there, um, it gives the fabric that stiffness so that I don't have to worry about it bunching up as much. And it's not like I'm doing a whole embroidery quilt this way. So. Anyhow, that's what we're going to learn today, is how to make these these ferns. And when I did this, I actually took the two greens that I, or the greens that I used, and I just used two different ones, I believe, on this, to the uh, store, and picked uh, threads that were near to those colors. All right, so I used two different, a light and a dark green in this. Today, for this, so that you can see it, I'm going to be using the same black that I've used so far. So, the very first thing you're going to do for this is you're going to make a stem stitch. Whenever I um, transferred the design on the back, I also drew in all of these lines. So, in order to know where I was going, just like with the rabbit, I went in and back based it along those lines. Then I take a marking pencil and I just lightly mark them as I'm doing them and then you're going to do a stem stitch along one of those marks. When you get to the end of that first of your stem stitch, I go down in and then, and this is going to take some practice and you may want to do this on another piece of fabric just to play with it till you get what you like. I usually go down somewhere around where that last stitch was made right along beside it and I'm going to come back out. I'm going to pull this out, pull this in. Again, you don't want to pull these too tight. Okay? And then this is more or less kind of a, almost a stab stitch, not quite. But I'm going to go back in, taking a tiny little bite. If you can see that, it's very, very small. And I may go right in beside where, on the other side of that stem stitch. Or a little bit before or after, just near it on the other side of the stem stitch on near where adjacent to where the last stitch came up and I'm going to pull that through just like that and then I'm going to do the same thing and I like to work one both sides at the same time I find I, I do that whenever I'm machine quilting feathers and things too I like to do both one after the other as I'm working down that side instead of coming down all on one side and then coming back up I can make it more even if I do it this way. So I'm going to go a little bit longer, about to the middle of that next stitch down from the last one, and I'm going to come up, and you see it makes that little, like a fork. So, and I just keep doing that, and as I get closer to the bottom, sometimes, not all the time, I will make these stitches just a little bit longer than they are at the top. And I try to angle them up 
but nothing in nature grows exactly the same. So if you don't get them all angled up just perfectly, that's okay. You do not have to be dead on perfect every time. But I would suggest you practice this. I practiced it when I first started doing it. And I don't really know what this is called. I just know, I call it my fern stitch because this is how I make my ferns. And, um, but I don't know what their real name for it is. I'm, I apologize. But you're going to just keep doing that all the way down whatever little piece you have uh, stem stitched all the way till you get to the bottom. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to come back up and talk to you for just a second here. When you get to the bottom of that little piece, then I will do my stem stitch. I will, when I get there I would do another stem stitch from wherever. Let's say that there's a, a spot right here. I've gone up here and then there's another stitch that's coming off here. When I got here, I would go ahead and do my stem stitch even though I've got all of this left. And then I'd come up here and I'd work my way back to, to here. And then I would go on down. Then if there was another place over here that went up, I would do that. That way I can actually start at the base of a major outcrop, go to the top, and as I'm working down, I get all these little outcroppings from that. So that when I get back to this base, I've got that section done without having to break my thread a lot. And it makes it easier to blend all of these little pieces in as you're doing it that way. So I just start and just keep working until I get them done. There is quite a bit on this, but like I said, it really fills it in and it just gives it that extra texture and it makes it look very, very real to me, much more realistic. But that is our fern stitch. Once you've got that done, then you're ready to quilt it. I haven't done that yet on this. As I stated when we first started this, I made my borders a little bit bigger. However, the more I look at it, the more I like this size of border, so I will probably only trim it off a little bit. But I plan on machine quilting this, so I want at least a half inch around that I can have a little bit extra control as I'm machine stitching. But I, excuse me, probably will not trim a lot off of this one. So if, you know, as, if you're going to machine quilt it, and then especially if you do other projects, keep that in mind. Uh, the more I looked at this, this, the better I like it this way. So I'll make it work. But that's all that we have on this one. We will be beginning a new um, quilt next time. So I look forward to seeing you again. This is Starla Henderson with Fronter House Quilts Blog, and this was our spring sampler. I hope you enjoyed making it as much as I enjoyed teaching it to you. Thank you for joining me.